Today we want to talk about simplifying an urban scene or a street scene, um, a subject that's a bit more cluttered than what we're used to because it helps to take photographs that are overly detailed, way too much information, and then work on simplifying them. And generally that's always in the block end stage because how we see it in the beginning really decides whether the painting is going to work or not. Now in this lesson we're going to uh, talk about simplifying a cityscape or a street scene. Uh, the whole purpose is to take something a lot more complicated and really trying to simplify it. So we're not going to get much past a block in. I mean we could. You could carry it further. But the block in is the important part because that's where you do all the simplifying. That's where you make the decisions of what to leave out, what to pull together, pick the overall value of a plane or the overall color. You're really simplifying. And it's important to take something, I think, a little harder, more complicated than what you might do. Because you don't learn how to simplify from a, a more simple looking landscape. You really learn how to simplify when you take something that's a lot harder and then try and simplify it. And the first, you know, dozen may not, you may not be happy with, but it really does force you to think through making things uh, more simple, easier to read for the viewer. The more of those you do, the better. Now, when we, when we do these kind of paintings, they're, they're always exercises. In other words, I wouldn't start doing this, come up with paintings for a show at a gallery. What I would do is, in my painting to try and get better, I would pick subjects like this and work on them. And when you practice, you always work smaller. You know, you don't want to do a, a 24 by 30 of a really complicated street scene just to learn how to simplify. Do 6 by 8, 8 by 10, maybe 9 by 12, and just practice simplifying. So our goal is to, when we look at this, decide, you know, what's my focal point? It's a little obvious in this one, the focal point is maybe this area right in here. Most of the cart, the umbrella, some of the figures there. That means everything else is up to elimination, simplification. So when I look at this, I want to eliminate things. This figure here is too big, so I want to get rid of him. I do like the stroller, but the person pushing the stroller is back here. Anyway. I want to eliminate that. It kind of conflicts with my focal point. Eliminate this and this. I might add some of the figures in the background. I also want to eliminate the stuff all along the outside. This tree here just cuts off the side. A lot of this stuff here, just not, not that important. So what that tells me is when I'm starting, I want to pull together just what's important. So somewhere right about in here. So that's the first thing, is to eliminate what's unnecessary. And this gives me more of what I want to paint. Then as I look at this, all my detail, or most of the detail will be here, and the figures a lot less back in here. So the simpler I can keep this one value for the sky, uh, maybe a value for this area, a value and a color, and then a value for this building and a value right in here. And then maybe another one there. So I have one, two, three, four values for the background. That's all I want is those value changes. And I know my color is going to be simple because it's a cloudy day. Everything's somewhat muted. So it's going to be variation of a lighter, more muted violet, red violet, orange and blue. Something muted and cool. And that's all that matters color-wise. It's more about the temperature. Cooler, lighter, lighter value, and simpler shape. Then I decide what I want to add. I, I like the bus here. Actually, there's two buses, and it's kind of hard to figure out what it is, but you just make it into one bus. All it is is a light object to make the darker umbrella stand out and the darker uh, produce here stand out. So I don't really care if it even looks like a bus when I paint it. It's more about shape, abstract shape, good values, and then I want to capture the atmosphere. Of what's there. So it's not about rendering things. I don't want to worry about how many pieces of fruit or vegetables or how many windows in the bus. It's all about simple shape, simple value, with the focus again being right in here, not on the outside edges or the background. It's always about 
the focal point. So the background should just make the center of interest stand out better. Now from here I want to do a thumbnail and do as many of these as you have to. So you can see how I've simplified the skies of value. I got these buildings here, one value, this building in here, one value, then the sidewalk, and then underneath the umbrella, the objects in the card and the figures and figures out here, they're all one value. So I basically got about three or four values in the whole drawing, sky, umbrella, sidewalk, or my lights. The rest is my shadow pattern. And this is what we is what we want to paint, is this um, this value pattern, these simple values. I got three values, kind of a, a lighter dark, a darker dark, and then white, or a real light value. So if I can translate this to a small painting, it'll work, no matter what colors I use. As long as I keep it cooler in the background, a little warmer or more intense colors up front. So that's what we want to uh, focus on. I'll be doing this image. A couple of other images. One is this. I, I don't have the thumbnail for this, but same thing here. Focal point could be anywhere. It could be the trees, or it could be trees with a little bit of the statue. But what I have here then, shape-wise, is one value in shape for the background. You know, and I can lift a building up or move it down doesn't really matter. What I'm doing here is suggesting shape and value. So this would be one shape and value. The sidewalks, sidewalk going this way and the street back in here, all that would be one shape and value. That gives me the sky. If I get the buildings in there, the sky is already decided. And then the shape of the flower bed and the shape of the ground and the trees here ground and shrubbery. And if I can get one value for all those upright objects, the flowers, the bench, trees, figures, buildings, all that, just one darker value and the statue, and then the lighter sky, lighter sidewalk. And if I can get that design of that simple dark and light, get that down with paint, it's going to work. It's not the detail that makes it. It's the getting the right values and the right shapes of these things. I would want to um, first, again, just like the last one, crop. If my center of interest starts around maybe the statue, I would probably zoom in and paint that. That zooms into what's more important, eliminates stuff that's not. But when I squint at this, you can see that pattern of dark. The buildings, trees, the grass, all that blends together in the background and foreground to create one dark shape. And then the dark shape of the flowers, dark shape of the statue, then just sky and sidewalk. The minute we can reduce it to a simpler design of one or two or three values, the better. This is another one. Um, it's, it, it's in the images to pick. I don't have a thumbnail here for this, but um, you'll do the same thing. Decide what's important and what's not. And right away, I know that you know, this guy's not important. These figures down here. The rest, I think, works pretty good. I would play down these trees because they're way over to the side and emphasize these a bit more. But simplifying, the crowd becomes a large one shape there and maybe a shape here. There may be an individual there, but... These are upright planes, the figures are, block them in dark, then get a few highlights, and they're going to read as figures. Same thing with all the little holes in the bridges. When I look at this, this area becomes just a dark shape on the bridge compared to this area. So it's about eliminating, pulling together, simplifying, to make it read as simple shapes, Make it you know, look like brush strokes. I want it to read as paint, not as a photograph. And to show the atmosphere. The atmosphere is very important in a cityscape, just like it is in a landscape. So the next one here, this is a vendor here in New York. All these are New York, They're just easier street scenes. It's a really great place to, to paint and get material. So the first thing I wanted to do is decide what I want to leave out. And that's even too big. I want to 
What I'm interested in, obviously, is the vendors stand there with the umbrellas. You know, I want enough over on the right side to balance it out. I don't want um, the cart to be in the middle, but I have to have something over on the right side now to balance it out. If I have the right side edge this far over, I could zoom in a bit more. And usually we do this with um, thumbnails till the advent of the computer, but this to me is more of a square or a vertical composition. Because I'm really not interested in the right side with the figure and the motorcycle. That's more of what I'm interested in. So he's off center. You know, the umbrella's close to center, but there's less space here, more space here, so it's not centered. Uh, but my focal point can be you know, right in here, could be there, or it could just be the figures. But that, this is what's important in this area. The background should just make the umbrellas and the figures stick out. So the background here is light enough that the darker figures stand out, but it's, uh, the background is also dark enough that the lighter umbrellas stand out. So everything is geared towards contrast. Color-wise, it doesn't matter. I probably wouldn't use the green trees in the background. I might use a, you know, violet or a, a warm violet for fall trees or, you know, something that's um, maybe a bit more interesting than just green all the time. Green's the common place. We think of trees, grass, we think of green. So just to change things up. But this gives me the shapes I want, composition, and I got a one value for the background. Well, let's go to my thumbnail. I've got kind of a lighter dark or maybe a darker light, one way or the other, for the background. Dark umbrellas, dark figures, dark cart. Um, I do have the figure over here. I forgot about that on the bench. And then the pattern of the shadows on the sidewalk. So all that, all the upright, anything upright is dark, or anything in the shadow on the flat area is dark. So one big dark shape sets up the composition. And then the background is just there to make the focal point stand out. So the more we can simplify, the better. This is the last one here, also in New York. What I like about this is pretty much the door with the figures there. This is kind of my focal point right in here. I like the sunlight and shadow on the door, which means everything else is, you know, just up to interpretation. It's, I don't have to be exact about anything. Um, I want to interpret, suggest, simplify quite a bit. So when I crop this, I do like the door, so I'm going to include most of the door. And um, right about in there. And that to me is a real nice composition. you got these strong lines leading this way. got the strong vertical lines, kind of breaking it up. Everything kind of converges here in the in the uh, middle, which is where the figures are. So it's a real strong composition, which I think hopefully that draws me to things more than just detail or uh, flashy color. Again, the thumbnail here, you can see the strong lines still. Everything eventually leading down to the the figures, the strongest contrast is right in there. So when I paint this, whatever color and temperature I use here in the shadow will be very simple. As long as it contrasts the bright sunlight on the door, sunlight in the background. Simple dark and light shapes. You can see the big overall pattern, you know, starting here and just winding down through the figures, through the background shadow pattern. And it's all somewhat connected. And if I can transfer this to the canvas, then it really doesn't matter what color I use. I do want to use enough of a color temperature to suggest the atmosphere. Things getting lighter and cooler as they go back in here. And the sunlight warm enough and shadows cool enough that it reads the sunlight. But this is what makes the painting. Color is just the icing on the cake. So think of these as exercises, small six by eight. 8 by 10 my goal first was about to do about two or three of these, 5 by 7, 6 by 8, just to show how a real simple 
putting down the shadow pattern in, in a basic color and just breaking it up into uh, keeping it bigger, simple shapes, just to suggest the light, the atmosphere, and the overall pattern and design, and that there's no detail at all. But you learn more from repetition, so work smaller and do more of them, and uh, things start to click a lot better. If you stay with the, the safer subjects all the time, and nothing wrong with that, but to really stretch yourself and grow, you got to do things that you think you can't do. And uh, then you have to figure out ways to do them and really helps your, your painting overall. I do the same thing with figures. I don't do much figure painting, but I do a lot of figure painting for practice. And that makes my landscape a lot better. The key here is repetition and practice.